This is your home. You must listen. This is our planet. Do you hear the birds chirping? The bees buzzing? The wolves howling? They're all saying something. Whether you live in a hammock or a palace, it took energy to build it. Just like the homes of every organism on this planet. Giant stadiums are built and 99% of the time remain vacant. Lots are cleared and put up on the market. In 1800, population hit a milestone, around 1 billion. 94% of us lived in regions that were considered rural. In 1900, our population hit 2 billion, and 40% of us lived in what's classified as urban. Modern agriculture changed this. We called it the Industrial Revolution. Currently, our population is at 7.8 billion. 75% of people call home in environments known as urban. Metropolitan. Everything we need is contained within a confined region, a city and its surrounding metropolitan. While our population is booming, our actions take me seriously now, leaving millions of species on the brink of extinction. Extinction is a natural part of evolution. But if you ask yourself this one question, are we trimming off leaves from the evolutionary tree? Or are we losing whole branches? Bees travel from flower to flower, day after day receiving nectar. At the same time, there is a valuable transfer of pollen allowing their food supplying flowers the opportunity to drop seeds and survive. This same bee takes pollen and nectar back to its hive, so the whole colony can survive. Humans, houses are taken for granted because someone always has a bigger mansion. This is a city. This is a metropolitan. And this is the land it takes to feed this population. I have a possible solution. I'm not a genius. I actually heard this from another person. Let's say a bee colony is here. This is where their water supply is. And these are the location of their pollen and nectar sources. Very few of these plants live in the desert or in the forest because flowers grow on plants and plants don't grow in the desert. And large trees like oaks and pines don't actually produce the pollen and nectar these bees need to survive. A large percentage of these are lost due to new developments. A large percentage of these are lost due to poor land management. You know, people burning and cutting the grass when new wildflower sprouts emerge. Just calling them weeds. Before a bee finds a flower killing this plant's chance at pollination, for this plant there is no reproduction because there are no seeds to undergo germination. A large percentage of these plants are killed to produce what we are consuming. You know, land clearing to create farm animal grazing, giant monocultures of one species of plant. This is the tip of the iceberg. There is something much bigger in the oceans brewing. People are raising bees in captivity. This is a business created by the farming industries. Do you really think it was so we can get the honey? Loss of native flowers created a deficit. Bees are not able to find enough food naturally. Their hard work is all to create a life source we know as honey. Large areas of one species of plant are known as a monoculture. Monocultures are far more susceptible to insect pests. Because the particular insect pest, once it gets into that area, has the ability to grow rapidly like wildfire. A loss of biodiversity has also created a loss in insect pest predators. Ironically, most of these are wasps and things that are closely related to bees. The agriculture industry combats this insect pest problem with pesticides. Same pesticides that end up getting on the bees and get brought back to their hives. A large percentage of native wildflower populations are lost due to non-native species also known as invasives. Natural water supplies are depleted for crop irrigation. Honey is taken to feed the human population. Monocultures lead to what is known as soil degradation. Soil degradation leads to desertification. Every year 110 million heck hectares of land are depleted. Roughly the same size as the entire state I live in. We have a problem and it's one we created. This goes back to when I said I'm not a genius. I actually heard this from another person. Planting wildflowers can be a real solution. 
Even a small garden in a windowsill can make a real difference. Like little islands that a bee can hop on in order to make it to a real food supply. Like an airport where butterflies and bees can stop in and refill their tanks. That's all for this video. I really just want to say thanks to everyone for supporting this channel. Together we can make a difference. Everyone wants to save the planet. I know we can do it. We, we are, are the many. many. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the colony. colony. Together we have the power to improve our planet. Don't ever underestimate it. The tools are right in front of us. It's your heart and mind at your fingertips. And now we have the connections. We're building a team with a mission. All about conservation. Communication around the earth only takes seconds. Together we will change this planet. All this talk about extinction. So many good reasons to listen our existence grow a garden and reduce your dependence put native trees and flowers in it bees and butterflies pollinate them seeds fall and create new plant seedlings these plants take in carbon and create oxygen that is a step towards a solution that is your power in action making a difference you have our support friend thank you for every moment you listen if you choose to thank you for your subscription i put everything into this content it's our one and only planet. All the support, I truly appreciate it. Your love alone makes it worth it. I've been stung over a dozen times. I'm not sure how many different places. By over a dozen different species, most with similar reactions. We must respect these bees for pollination. A little sting, that is nothing. That's just their form of protection. We live in a colony. Are we really that different? New videos here every Thursday. That is my commitment. If you have the power to do something positive, you have the responsibility to do it. Well, I said it. I guess I'm obligated. I convinced myself and I'm excited for the changes. We need to be self-aware and stop waiting for legislation. Because growing more food means less pesticides to produce it. Which means more pollinators like bees will not be affected. Growing our own food means an opportunity for you to teach a child what real food is. Because growing food for you means less fuel for transporting it. More food for you means less greenhouse gases. More food for you means less pollution and fertilizer in our water systems. Welcome to the great outdoors friends. Let's make a difference. Be sure to press the link right down here in the bottom corner. Or if you want to see more sting videos, click on this one. Or this is the one that YouTube said was best suited for you. Hopefully we'll see you again right here in the great outdoors. I'm your host, Alex, the Florida Wildlife Guy.